Um, Professor Yoli, we've had an excellent event looking at the whole um, new, relatively new science of epigenetics. There are obviously some really interesting issues about how um, epigenetics could be linked um, to deprivation, and then that then plays out in the prevalence of things, um, diseases such as uh, cancer, heart disease, etc. Is this a real opportunity, do you think, for policymakers and social scientists now to make a link between the biological medical science of epigenetics and then use the information from that to, to mould a more appropriate approach to social policies to, to deal with these um, diseases and, and conditions? Yes, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think there are two things that are going on here, really. I mean, um, biologists that I, I speak to often talk about epigenetics as understanding how biology gets under uh, the skin of, of, of people in the sense of, you know, that um, emotionally, you know, so that, that how things that we would interact with a person with, how the biology would get expressed, but also how the social gets inside uh, the biology uh, into the genome or back in contact with the genome. Now, I think that epigenetics, you know, isn't the whole story about how our social environment interacts um, with our bodies or our well-being, but that what is very powerful about epigenetics is it gives us a way of understanding some particular mechanisms through which the social environment, and particular aspects of the social environment, that could be an emotional aspect or it could be something you eat or something you're exposed to, how that gets to have an impact on your body through its interaction with the genome in the way that is described by epigenetics, that is by regulating the extent to which genes are switched on or off, or as it were, the volume at which they are expressed. Now, of course, I don't want to give the impression that everything that's important about disparities in wealth or health or well-being in society is down to epigenetics or to genomics. That's clearly not the case. But there are a bunch of things where we now are beginning to see that there is a real possibility that epigenetics underlies some of these issues. And it also provides a kind of a model for the way in which the social and the biological sciences can collaborate to investigate things of policy or health policy importance.